This is indeed Whistleblower Appreciation Day, and I'm very happy to be here and to be included in this celebration, because I think whistleblowing is something that should be celebrated. I grew up never hearing the word whistleblower, had no idea what it referred to at all. And as you've heard before, I come from a small, famous, um, poor city in California. I think it's the hotbed of some of the most talented and determined people in the country. I can think of no smaller jurisdiction that has produced more forward-leaning people than Compton, California, nor the people who've lived in Compton, from the Bushes, the President Bush, to Kevin Costner, uh, to NWA, and now to Kendrick Lamar. Um, but I'd like to speak to you today because I found myself as a whistleblower completely by accident. I had absolutely no idea that that term would ever apply to me. A few years ago, um, I read a book by Dr. Laura Schlesinger called The Ten Stupid Things Women Can Do to Mess Up Their Lives. And I felt like it was calling to me. <laughs> so when I read it, I checked the back, and in the appendix was listed an organization that would help you reestablish your life. So I read the book. It took me a couple of weeks. And then I found a chapter. I went down and joined. I joined. I fell in love with the mission. I volunteered, and I started to work. I would work my day job. I would get off, put my tennis shoes on, and I would start marching for causes in Washington, DC. I can easily say that I've marched a couple of hundred miles in Washington, DC, fighting one thing after another that affected poor and marginal people, people like me. Eventually, time went on. I joined the board. They put me on board. And then somehow or other, I became chair. But they were constantly saying to me, we're out of money. We don't have any cash. We don't know how we're going to pay the bills. We don't know how we're going to pay this. And I remembered that I used to go with them to funders. We go to the funder. We speak to the funder. They give us a check. I worked on grants, and we get the grant. And the very next meeting, we didn't have any money. So finally, I asked. And you know, it was rah, rah. Good, Marcel, you're doing a good job. And then people said, well, you know, now that you're chair, you can ask questions. I said, well, may I see the books? All I said was, may I see the books? There was nobody there, just me and some staff members and some organizers. I asked to see the books. And the next thing I knew, I went from my ideas being good and powerful and strong and forward-leaning to a pariah. Welcome to whistleblowing. <laughs> the stench of being a pariah. But whistleblowing isn't about being a pariah. Whistleblowing, for me, is really about having the nerve to ask that you receive the same return for tax dollars paid, or for goods and services that we as citizens deserve. And I think if you don't ask those questions, you'll never have the kind of society you want to live in. And marginalized people, people on the edge, never really feel like citizens anyway. It's almost like you're sojourning here for a moment. And I want to talk about whistleblowing as a way to bring people from the edges of society into the center of society. And you say, well, why whistleblowing? Whistleblowing means that you can talk about a problem and you can have someone listen to your concerns. Even if they can't solve it for you, at least you know that when you ask the question, it was worthy of being considered. And many people on the edges of society never feel like what they're asking is either addressed, much less answered. I think once you do that, you'll find that in marginal communities, people will start to have something 
that they lack and that I think that is just as important as air and water, and that's hope. That's why I call whistleblowing an extension of hope. Everyone that's ever blown the whistle has blown the whistle in the hopes that asking the question would bring attention, if not a solution, to the question that they asked. People who live on the margins of society may lack food, but what they lack more than anything else is an intangible, and that intangible is hope. People need to feel like when they're spoken, when they speak, someone will answer them back. When they have a concern, it will be considered. So the best people to monitor many, to monitor many of these programs, these anti-poverty programs, are poor people who participate in the program. They know where the faults are. They know when the money isn't reaching the people it should be reaching. They know when their neighbor's lights shouldn't go off, but they go off anyway, even though there's a program in place for the lights not to go off because they've run out of funds. And when they say something about it, no one listens. No one hears them. So I'm proposing that whistleblowing that has all of those negative connotations a snitch, you're talking to the man, I don't know why you're saying anything, just keep your mouth closed. I think whistleblowing should be elevated now to be not just a right, but a responsibility. If you live here with us, you need to talk about the wrong that you see. And you, know, you need to know that when you do, you won't be castigated for it, you won't be marginalized for it, you won't become a pariah. By doing that, I think that you'll bring people from the very edges of society back into the mainstream of society. So instead of whistleblowing just being seen as a way of tattling on somebody, whistleblowing can now be seen as a way of integrating all levels of society into an active participatory government. And I think without that, that it will continue to be stratified. So, I know the regular ideal of whistleblowing, as I used to say, all the whistleblowers I knew about when I did it had a movie or a book deal. There was Erin Brockovich, and there was that woman that Cher played Silk, unfortunately she died, Karen Silkwood. Um, there was a doctor who reported the cigarettes, but these were all people who were lauded and elevated. Regular people like me, need to feel like they can blow the whistle, it will be listened to, but more importantly, it will actually help men's society, help people on the edges feel like they're more a part of society. So I propose that all anti-poverty programs, when the people are brought into the program, have a meeting or a pamphlet that is handed to the people and said, we want to find out how the program is working, not just through a pamphlet, but through constant reinforcement. When they go to get their benefits, someone says, how's the program working? Do you have any suggestions for how it might work better? And I think that there should be some mechanism so that when they make the suggestion, they're heard. And when they're heard, I'm sure that every one of these programs will work better, will reach further, will help more people, and in the process actually change society. And after all, isn't that the real purpose of whistleblowing? To change society, not just save money, but to save lives and to change the day-to-day -day lives of the people who have reported the problems to help their neighbors and friends. Thank you.